I was short courses. I, I skipped the short courses and went to the San Francisco Ballet instead, uh, recreation. But today I went to the seminars and I was probably one of the few older people who went to all the seminars and they were absolutely wonderful. This is one of the best sets of seminar talks I've attended over the years. Except I used to give seminars myself, so. So what's the, what's the latest seminars about? Okay, well, yeah. today it started off with a report on markets. And they gave projections of the next 10 to 20 years of markets in display and display-related technology. So what's the future of the display in the next 10, 20 years? Well, the, one of the more interesting things was because of recent developments, liquid crystals are going to dominate probably for the next 25 years. But you've been dominating already the last 50 years, right? And everyone expected them to go away. Yeah, and five all years less. ago, I, I told people that LCDs would be have larger markets than OLEDs in five to ten years. And that is happening. And the projection of the market people this morning was that OLEDs would gain about one-third the market share of LCDs over the next 20 years or so. And uh, so the total display market is roughly $170 million a year. And for the next 25 years, LCDs will continue to have roughly two-thirds of the market. So uh, did you believe that uh, the stuff he was working on 50 years ago was going to be all over the place? Not really. In fact, when he was in graduate school, he didn't work on liquid crystals. I had never heard of a liquid crystal <laughs> until, until I graduated. Was it he your idea that he should get into that? Oh, yes, it was my idea. I yeah. like liquids and I like crystals, yeah. especially diamond crystals. Yeah. Uh, anyway. <laughs> and, but, I mean, it's, it's, it's huge, right? So what's your thought right now in, in terms of, uh, was it the right thing to do? Oh, yes. In fact, Fred has... I think original patents, liquid yeah. crystal technology from Bell, to Bell Labs, yeah, so, which is a major research lab. So I was told I was throwing away a major research career by going to Japan for a year and working over there. And it turns out to be one of the best things I ever did. Uh, in 1971, I invented the VAN LCD, Vertically Aligned Pneumatic LCD, at Bell Laboratories. And I presented it at a uh, technical conference in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and uh, filed the patent uh, roughly the week before. And that device, that liquid crystal mode, is now in over 50% of the world's LCD TVs. So when you look here, every single room has one of your TVs, right? How does it, how does it feel to, to think that uh, this stuff is everywhere? Well, I don't know. Fred's so famous that I feel really inferior being an English as a second language teacher. Well, these are my children. <laughs> I, I'm very pleased to see my children doing so well. Uh, the other one that has done really well Actually, there are two others I'll mention. Uh, in 1973, I left Bell Labs because I didn't think they would ever make a product using anything I'd ever did. And I went to a company that I thought would make a product, and that was Hewlett Packard. And uh, it took them, they had promised they would introduce a product in six months and I demonstrated the technology to uh, Bill Hewlett and Dave Backer, the founders of HP, in uh, May 1974. And in roughly 1971, uh, they introduced a line of calculators. 
a uh, scientific and a business calculator, the HP 11 and the HP 12. Uh, 71 or 81? 81. 81. So it I, took them I took seven them, years. Yeah, it was supposed to take six, so, six years instead of six months. So, that's right. California time. <laughs> yeah. So these things take a long time. Well, they decided they had to move a division. They didn't have the CMOS technology. I, I brought Sharp in, and Sharp said that they would give HP the CMOS technology. And HP management said, we cannot share our crown jewels with the Japanese. And so they moved an entire division from Cupertino, California to Corvallis, Oregon. They built a CMOS manufacturing facility, and they introduced uh, the first HP computational product using liquid crystals, the HP 11, HP 12, uh, before that the HP 21, the HP 41. Uh, but anyway, these are probably the most important products that HP has ever introduced. They were very uh, impressive and uh, important. And it was it brought, cool to be part of that. And it brought them a lot of profits. Everybody had them? Yes. All the kids? And I, I still have my HP 11 and HP It still works. Yes. I have to change the battery in one of them, but the other one hasn't required a battery change in 30 years or so. <laughs> Whoa. That's, that's good battery life. Yeah, it is. But at any, any rate, uh, cycling back, okay, third thing I want to mention, my contribution to LCDs maybe just as important as the first two, is uh, there was a professor at the University of California, a physics professor named Ron Shen. And I had hired at HP several of his previous students, PhD students. And they had done very well at Hewlett Packard, and I told them I was ready for another one. And he said, I've got a really stu good student coming along. And this student had scored number three on the China-wide exam, which determined who in China would get to come to graduate school in the United States. And he came to graduate school at the University of California, Berkeley, working for Professor Shen and I tracked him, and when he was ready to graduate, I made him an offer and hired him at Hewlett, at uh, Greyhawk Systems, my company at the time. And I got him his green card so he could work legally in the United States. So Wei Chen, who was this promising graduate student, is now vice president for displays at Apple. So if you use an Apple display, you are using a display that Wei Chen has had a major role in. And I'm still working with Wei. Uh, he is chairman of the, uh, display, of the display awards committee where we uh, make awards to the uh, leading displays of the previous year and I am working with him on that committee, and so it's a great activity. So cy cycling to the present, today's seminars said liquid crystals are maybe 90% of the display business today, and they will continue to be over 70% of the display business for the next 20 or 25 years. And uh, OLEDs, which are the major challenger, will be limited to one third of the liquid crystal display market. And that's because OLEDs are too hard to make and too expensive. And there have been major improvements in LCDs uh, a major one of which has been the use of QLED technology to illuminate the displays. 
So, so that's one of the things so, that's been happening since we did the video two years ago. Yes, and More so many, many of you may go to a, a consumer electronics store and see that they are selling LED TVs. There are no LED TVs on the market except for one very, very expensive one from Sony. But these are all LCD TVs illuminated by LEDs, light from LEDs, OLED and QLED LEDs. Not OLED LEDs, but QLED LEDs. So one of the big developments here is QLEDs as a major source of getting high quality color and ultra bright LCDs and which make the LCDs a much more cost effective process purchase than OLEDs. So and, uh, why do people buy the 4K TVs? Is is not so much for the resolution, right? Okay, so we talked about 4K TVs uh, two years ago, yeah. and I stand by my original position that, yes, if you get close enough to a 4K TV, you could see all the pixels, but at the normal viewing distances, uh, 2K or even 1K is probably good enough. But the 4K TVs are the top of the line unit and 8K TVs will soon replace them at the top of the line. And the best electronics, the high-end electronics, which is very important in achieving the outstanding quality possible with LCDs, uh, is enabled by the electronics in the high-end 4K TVs. So it's the chipset, basically. Yes, it's the driving, the driving circuits. Which is a big part of what makes the quality. Absolutely, and for many years when I did my multi-client reports, I told my readers that the problem of the display device uh, the electronic display would be solved, but the real advance that was required was in the driving electronics. And so if you get a 4K or an 8K you uh, get a better L chipset. LED TV, you get the top end chipset, and it's a good purchase for that reason. All so, right. so anyway, what else is going on? Uh, QLEDs will continue to be important. Uh, currently, there's the photoluminescent QLEDs, which are illuminated with light sources, and then there will be another generation eventually of electroluminescent QLEDs, and, uh, and those devices uh, could be their own display devices. Uh, in addition, there are a lot of work on micro LED displays. Is that going to be huge? When they solve the problems, there are probably something like 120 companies worldwide working in this area. Uh, the challenge is uh, being able to uh, achieve uh, performance cost and uh, appropriate uh, market edge. And it may take five or 10 years to, uh, for these things to evolve. But anyway, uh, and the other thing that evolving is heads up and heads down displays for automobiles. And uh, See, there was a major talk about the importance of uh, heads-up displays, which would be at a, a, approximately uh, at the front of your uh, car. Do you that, have one of these? 
there won't be an appropriate one on the market for at least three to eight years. Oh. If you believe the General Motors people, maybe three years, but my estimate is probably more likely five to eight years. Hopefully we'll have self-driving cars before then, right? These will help enable self-driving cars, and I think there's still a lot of technology and legal issues to be worked out in self-driving. At any rate, the bottom line is this was a very exciting day of seminars at the SID 2019 Display Week, and it ensures that we'll there will be multiple generations of advanced displays in the next 20, 10 to 20 years and full employment for workers to develop these displays. So it's very exciting and I encourage people to look over the proceedings of this meeting.